Pop Delight. It's to be joined by Jermaine Dlewayo. And and firstly, Jermaine, have I got that right? Have I pronounced that correctly? Yeah, you know what? You've done, you done the best so far. That was, that was, you got it right. You actually did get that right. What other crazy ones have you had? Um, When I was young, people used to call me Jermaine Telephone Wire, to be fair. But, no. um, or um, Dlewayo, Dwayo. Just a lot of like, just loads of crazy ones, to be honest. Yeah. But you actually got that quite quite spot on, to be fair. Good. That That's a good start. And the uh, I think we're going to get on as well, because the telephone wire thing, I used to be called that as a child as well. My reasons are different to, to yours. I used to have long hair and my mum used to like plait it on top and they'd say it was like a uh, telephone. So, yeah, just a... Yeah, I got I got short hair, so I ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Well, listen, you are the nephew of Derek Chisora. You are making your debut on this show on a Derek Chisora undercard, twenty seventh of July. This sounds fantastic. It's quite the headline, Jermaine. Talk to me. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a dream come true, to be honest. Uh, I've always dreamt about fighting on my uncle's undercard, and I know he's also he won't tell me, but I know he's always thought want me to fight with him one day and here we are now tell us a little bit about this boxing journey because I, I was looking on your instagram i saw some great snaps from like i think derek was fighting at it might have been west ham or it might have been something like that upton park uh, and you're in the ring with him just a small child uh, it must have been quite the journey when did you decide you wanted to box and how much of an influence has derek been so um, my uncle started taking me to the boxing gym when I was about one years old. My mum didn't like it at all. She used to say, no, don't take him, don't take him. But he still, he he, he does what he wants, so he took me. And then um, from there, it just started from there. I used to go to all the fights, and I've just always been there. From As you've seen, the Upton Park one, that was when he faced Dallas Williams back in 2010, when he won the British title, and that was like... That was like, you see my eyes just looking at the belt like, oh, wow, this is... I want, I want this... So, yeah, it was beautiful, honestly. How on earth do you have that conversation with your mum? When your mum is saying, no, I don't want you to box. Now, I, look, I don't know about you, but I listen to my mum. I say, OK, I'm not, I'm not doing it. How, how did you tell her, no, I'm going to box? How did that go? Oh, me and my mum used to go back and forth. Like, we used to go back and forth all the time. She tried to ban me one time when I was younger. And I, I just snuck out. I just snuck out and go to train and I just come back. So it was always it was always a thing like she just cared about my well being you know she she wanted me to be like a doctor or something like that I said mum listen I'm a fighter naturally so it's gonna happen either way. Was there a moment where you knew you were a fighter? Obviously you got taken to the gym quite early on, um, whether or not your mum liked it or not, but you were there. You felt like you had it in you. But there was there a kind of a trigger point where I don't know you were given a flight fight or flight moment or you hit a bag in a certain way you had a good little technical spa was there something that happened that made you think this is me yeah this so the first, actually it's the first time i ever went to like a boxing gym without my uncle this was my first ever club and um i was very young so they i was like i thought oh yeah i'm dirty to his nephew you know this ain't no problem for me i went inspiring and these i sparred these boys and I got battered. I got absolutely beaten up. I never, I never been beaten up like that before in my life. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get you too. And then slowly and slowly, I started to progress, and it slowly started to. Then it was getting to the stage where I was now beating them up. So I've always known, like, oh, I'm meant for this. And I guess you, uh, your, your uncle must be must be very proud that you are turning pro on his undercard as well. I guess he's, um, yeah, he must be in a good place. What's he said about it? He's like, listen, they say he's, he's been harsh. He's like, listen, this ain't, the game ain't no joke. You know, it's not, you think it's going to be nice and fun. All this. I said, no, no, no. I've seen the, I've seen you box. I know how hard it is. He's always making sure that I know how hard boxing is. Since, since I started boxing, he's always made sure that I know that I have to train hard no matter what. Like he's always tells me when you train, you train like it's do or die. That's, that's the work ethic he's put in me. And what I guess you've won a fair bit as an amateur. I saw a couple of uh, couple of lovely looking belts. I think you had one on each each side on in oh, the yeah. uh, Instagram. You you've won a fair bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, see, I didn't really come onto the scene, and I didn't really do too much as a schoolboy uh, or a junior. I came onto the scene really as a a senior, where I just started to become a threat. I just, uh, I just said, oh, listen, I'm, I'm not on all the point stuff. So every time I went into the ring, I was always trying to hurt someone. 
So I just, I won the uh, Haringey Box Cup last year, um, and that was at the weight above. Well, I got one by stoppage. I had two stoppages in three days. I had three fights, and then also got to the Har- I got to the ABA fi- semi finals last year, and this year I got to the ABA finals. So yeah, I've, I've won quite a bit. I've won obviously regional titles. I'm I've won the the London Elite title. That's the two belts I've had, and to get out of London. It's really hard because everyone in London is you got Repton, you got West Ham, and I, I had to fight Repton and West Ham a week after a week, you know. So it was, yeah, I've had quite a few dust ups to be fair. And you're 22 years old now. What, why is now the right time to turn over and become a pro? What made you make that decision? See, my goal, my thing was I was never really um, interested in like going to the Olympics. So yeah, it would have been nice if the opportunity was there, but my thing was I always wanted to win a world title and thing is with when you're at the lighter weights as well the um age comes off you affects you a lot quicker than most people so um i said you know what 22 i was looking at other fighters like some of my favorite fighters what age they turned over i was looking at like Hagler, errol spence they turned they turned over around the same age as well so i was like oh yeah okay let's let's do it now i've seen um you seem to get inspiration not just from you know as you just mentioned there Hagler and guys like that who turned over at a certain age obviously you get inspiration from your uncle but I was looking through your Instagram and there'll be like little quotes from Tank little quotes from Bernard Hopkins and stuff like that it seems that you get influenced by kind of great boxers right and great characters in the sport yeah 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 exactly that um actually Hopkins is because Hopkins is really inspiration because you know he obviously started boxing quite late. I didn't start boxing too late, to be honest, but um, he started boxing late and, you know, he he boxed in jail. He didn't really have amateur fights really like that. He And um, his his work ethic is just something I liked. You know, he talks about being a blue-collar worker and how how hard he used to have to work. And I'm like, I look at that, I'm like, all right, cool. Because I go to work as well. I'm like, all right. So when I'm at work, I'm thinking, oh, this is it. I've got to go train afterwards. But this is this is the grind, you know, this is boxing. This is the grind you have to do to get to the top. What what is the job that you do alongside this, and uh, is that going to carry on through the early stages of your, your pro career? Is that how you imagine it? Yeah, through the early stages of my career, I'm almost I'm almost finished. I'm actually in an electrical apprentice in Central London, and um, it's just something it's just something good to have. You know, there's there's nothing wrong with getting your hands dirty and working hard. You know, working is honestly there's it's it's a better living than going out and doing stuff on the streets. You know, so having that little humility and humble to say, oh yeah, I work as an electrician, like. I'm fighting at the O2, but you know I'm going back to work on Monday, so it's it's it's, it's good to have. Yeah, look, and there's a lot of fighters who do that as well. Certainly coming through early, and it it keeps that hunger, and it's quite sort of keeps you grounded, doesn't it? And if you're a exactly. if you're if you're training to be an electrician, I guess you'll be actually looking to turn off the lights of Engel Gomez on the 27th of July. Uh, that right? Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, that 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 sounds like that's your opponent at, at the moment. Hopefully that that all holds. Engel Gomez will be in the opposite corner on your pro debut. He's been in with everyone really uh, around your weights. Uh, what do you make of him and what, what are you looking to do in there? Yeah, see, I'll never, ever overlook anyone just because of a record. No, records don't mean records are for DJs. Um, I've been training like this is a world title fight because anything can happen in the boxing ring. I've I've, le- I've had to learn the hard way and just anything can happen. So I've looked at him like he's a he's a serious threat and I've I've watched him fight as well and he's dangerous. Like he's a very dangerous opponent. So I'm just I'm just ready to go to be honest. Yeah, he's he's a bit of a live wire. He's he's a he's a tough guy. So uh, yeah, but a, a chance to look good as well. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. So what's Derek Chisora like as an uncle? Honestly, man, he's to be fair, he's he's strict. You know, like I'd, I'd describe our relationship like um, you ever seen Fresh Prince, like Uncle Phil and Will? Yeah, that's yeah. what our relationship is. Like. You know, when we're having fun, we're having fun. When we're being, when I'm being naughty, mate, he puts the hammer down. Now, he's very strict on me. He's harsh on me, but he's on. He's done a lot for me as an uncle. Like I, I couldn't ask for a better uncle, to be honest. Are you training alongside him at all? Is that just every now and again you you'll train with him? Uh, it's just every now and again. He always wanted me to have have that inspiration to train myself. Like because at the end of the day, so it's going to going to be me in the ring. So I can't just be training with him and then just do nothing else. So everything boxing wise, I like yeah, I train with him sometimes. But mainly, I train with my coach down at St Pancras, CJ, and that's that's where my my base is. Mm-hmm. And and how do you see Derek getting on against Joe Joyce, the main event uh, on the show that you are featuring on? How do you see that going? Yeah, it'll be a tough night, of course. Joe Joyce is a very good fighter. You know, he's only lost to Gilles Zhang. But um, 
I've seen, obviously, I've been watching Joe Joyce as well. I've seen a bit of a decline and things like that. So, I, I, my uncle's been training very, very hard. Like, he's been putting a lot of work in this camp. So, I'm expecting a very big night for both of us, a very good night as well. Wins for uncle and nephew on the 27th, huh? Yes, exactly that. Good man. What what is your uh, what's your message to the fans then who are anticipating your pro debut, Jermaine? Guys, listen. I know you you all like my uncle. You know, Warchizora. Yeah, we. I bring the same type of pressure. I bring that same type of heat. But I'm honestly on a different level. I'm I'm savvy. I'm sweet. And when it comes to act, when it's time to rock, I'll be ready to rock. Trust me. I can take a hit and I can give it back as well. Love that. Great bars. Well done. And I think you meant every word as well. So lovely speaking to you, Jermaine. I can't wait to see you uh, in fight week. And I can't wait to see you uh, lace up those, those gloves and get things moving. Yeah, thank you so much.